you remember from lecture, we were talking about the monosaccharides such as glucose, galactose, and fructose. And we called them reducing sugars. In this demonstration, we're going to see exactly what that means visually, uh, why these are called such. And I'll say right now that it's going to depend upon the fact that there is an aldehyde present in, uh, in glucose and galactose and this ketone in, um, in fructose that give us this reaction with Benedict's that I talked about uh, briefly in class. Now, glucose, galactose, and fructose don't exist in these particular uh, structures in solution. In fact, they have a tendency to form rings, and that's what I'm going to draw right now. Okay. So let's just erase these, and let's draw some, some rings. Now, I'm going to use the traditional Hayworth projection of the of the uh, rings here. Glucose is easy. Glucose is uh, up, down, up, down, and here's where the aldehyde was, and I'm just going to draw a little wavy line there with the OH to indicate that this could be either alpha or a beta linkage. Okay, so this is glucopyranose. Now glucopyranose is like 99% of all the glucose that's dissolved in water because uh, there's a small percentage of the open form, which I'll draw like this. Okay, so I'm opening up along this bond right here. And the OH that's here in a squiggly line is actually the aldehyde that was at the very top of the structure that I drew before. So here's the Here's glucose. Okay. And the fact that glucopyranose uh, can exist uh, in this form as well as this form in solution means that there's always going to be a little bit of aldehyde present in any solution of glucopyranose. All right? So the idea that this is present in small quantities means that when we use our oxidizing agent, Benedict's solution, Benedict's solution, by the way, remember, is copper nitrate. And there's a lot of sodium carbonate in there to make it very basic. Okay? And there's also citric acid. A lot of citric acid. And this uh, coordinates the copper plus two. This is a plus two oxidation state. And that's the important thing. So that when copper plus two, which is going to be our oxidizing agent, reacts in Benedict's solution with this molecule, and we know that the aldehyde is an easily oxidized functional group, what you get then is this particular reaction. What you also form is a plus one oxidation state for copper, and this reacting with water gives you this material, copper one oxide, which is an orange brown precipitate. Okay, now what do we do with galactose? Let's just do the same thing. Here we have galactose, just like glucose does not exist in this uh, Fisher projection, but in fact exists once again as the alpha and beta anomers. Just like glucose, this is galactopyranose. That's galactopyranose. That's the way galactose looks in solution. Okay. But it does also mean that there's a certain amount of the open form. There's the aldehyde that I drew as a squiggly line OH there. Okay. 
and that was uh, the galactose that I drew previously. And because this is present in small amounts, along with the major portion of galactose, which is this ring right here, reacting this with the copper two of the Benedicts okay, is going to give us the Got that. H O H is going to give us the galactonic acid. And you're also going to get copper plus one oxide. This again is that reddish brown precipitate that forms concurrently with the oxidation product. Now, interestingly, the color of this is a deep blue. So what you have is a deep blue solution going to a reddish brown precipitate of copper one oxide. We call this brick red for some reason. It doesn't look like brick red to me, but it's, uh, it's uh, usually stated in a textbook as a brick red solution. Okay, now what about fructose? Fructose. <sighs> is a little bit different. Okay. Here we have fructose in terms of... Now the best way to draw fructose in the furanose ring system is to draw glucose and kind of truncate it. So it looks like glucose, but not, not quite. Okay. So this squiggly line that I draw here is the carbon oxygen double bond of fructose. And just like with glucose and galactose, the fructose, which form these ring systems, fructose does the same thing, except that it forms a five-membered ring, which we call a furanose. And so we call this fructo furanose. Is there a fructo furanose? And this, like glucose and galactose, okay, is in equilibrium in solution with the open form, which in this case, once again, we can draw this. Okay. Like this. Okay. Fructose. has the property of, in solution, to be able to transform also into glucose. Scoot it in under here. So any fructose in solution can, in fact, be transformed into glucose. And glucose, then, because it has an aldehyde right here, can react, then, with the copper plus two component of Benedict's solution. And what do you get? Well, you get the, the expected oxidation product. CO2 minus okay, and Cu2O, which is a plus one. So you get an oxidation, you get a reduction, Here's your brick, brick red precipitate. And so we say that fructose is also a reducing sugar. Galactose and glucose are reducing sugars. Why? Because they reduce the copper plus two ion in Benedict's to copper one, which shows itself up as a brick red solid.